Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah, and today I want to talk about a couple of series of books that both have feisty young girls in them as their main characters. I've always loved to read, and two, and one of the series that is one that I read as a child, while the other one is one that I became familiar with more recently when my sister was reading them to her daughters one visit when I was home in Montana. Uh, my sister reads with her daughters every night before they go to bed, and when I'm visiting, I like to go in and listen listen as well. It's a nice it's a nice evening ritual. I get to some knee snuggles. I get to listen to my sister as she reads. I get to just hang out and be with them, and it's a really lovely evening uh, evening ritual. And this is how I first learned about Junie B. Jones and her adventures. I say you're never too old to have your big sister read to you. That's my that's my theory. That's my story anyway, and I'm sticking to it. So, you know, don't hold it against me. Um, So these books that I'm talking about today, Junie B. Jones and Ramona, Ramona Quimby by Beverly Cleary. I realize that neither of them are new series. Um, Junie B. Jones is a little bit more new than Ramona being having been written in the 90s, I believe. But it doesn't hurt to revisit some of your favorite books of childhood or be introduced to new books if you have daughters, if you have children, because um, you wouldn't just have to read them to your daughters, of course. But if you have children and you're looking for a new series or you want to revisit a series that you might have read as a child or, you know, you're looking for a series that maybe you weren't a child when they came out, like me with Junie B, and you're just looking for something new. Or you've got um, nieces or nephews or friends with children and you're looking for ideas of books to get them. I think both of these are really great places to start. Both of them are, as I said, series. The Junie B. Jones books have um, more books in them uh, than the Ramona Quimby books. But so that you can you can start to read these stories and really get connected with the characters. So those are the stories or the books that I'm talking about today. We are going to take a quick break before we get started, but when we come back from the break, I want to talk about Junie B. Jones by Barbara Park. Stay tuned, and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I was talking before the break about listening to my big sister read the Junie B. Jones series to my nieces, and this is the series that I want to talk about first. When we first meet Junie B., and she does insist on being called Junie B., B is the first initial of her middle name, but she insists that she is not Junie, she is Junie B., she makes this very clear at multiple places in the books. Um, When we first meet her, she is almost six and about to start kindergarten. So she's at a very precocious age. She's at a very um, transitional phase in her life because she's about to start kindergarten. And I think part of my enjoyment of the first few books stems from the fact that my youngest niece, my my sister's younger daughter, I have five nieces, she has two daughters. So my youngest niece was almost 
also almost six and also about to start kindergarten when I first encountered Junie B. And there are some things that Junie B says and ways she has of phrasing things that sounded just like my niece. They have similar ways of seeing the world. They're, they're not exactly alike, of course, but I just, I saw so much of my youngest niece in Junie B and that just made me enjoy the book so much more because I could, I could hear her voice in the voice of my niece. Um, thankfully, that niece doesn't actually get into quite as many interesting situations as Junie B does. Uh, but Barbara, Barbara Park, the author who sadly has um, passed away, but Barbara Park clearly had experience with almost six-year-olds when she was writing her first book about Junie B. So here's a brief description of the first two books, just to give you a flavor of the books and an idea of what Junie B. Jones is all about. So, Junie B. Jones and the Stupid Smelly Bus is the first book. And it says, remember when it was scary to go to school? Because it was your first day and you didn't know anything. Meet Junie B. Jones, kindergartner. She's so scared of the school bus and the meanies on it that when it's time to go home, she doesn't. And then the second book, Junie B. Jones and a Little Monkey Business. And that description says... It's a poo. It's pooey on B A B I E S until Junie B finds out that her new dumb old baby brother is a big fat deal. Her two bestest friends are having are giving her everything they own just to see him. And guess what else? Maybe she can bring him to school on pet day. So Junie B. Jones, the first Junie B. Jones book was first published in 1992. So and and there's almost 30 books in this series. So there's plenty of Junie B. Jones to be had. There's plenty of Junie B. Jones fun, excuse me, to be had. Um, she's in kindergarten and first grade throughout the series. So we don't follow Junie B. through too many ages as we do with some other characters in other series. But I love Junie B. because she is curious. She's funny. She says what she thinks and she goes for what she wants. So let's go back to that first description, the stupid smelly bus. So she's scared of going home on the bus. She doesn't have any problems riding the bus to school on her first, her first day of kindergarten. But then she hears some other kids over, she overhears some other kids talking about things that happen on the school bus. And um, I can't remember what it is, but they, they talk about how they pour something on your head, orange juice or pudding or something. I don't even remember, but she doesn't want that to happen to her. She is not going to ride that bus. Thank you very much. So, you know, she's almost six, so it's not like she's going to make the most logical of decisions in the world. So she decides she's just not going to go home. She hides in the classroom and then she has, she gets up to all kinds of crazy adventures, just wandering around the school. So (laughs) she's precocious. She, um, uh, her parents, uh, uh, deal with a lot of interesting situations. And then that second one, um, you notice that she she thinks maybe she can bring her baby brother to pet day because she overhears, again, she overhears things. She overhears her grandmother saying that her new baby brother looks like a little, mo- or is, a, is such a cute little monkey. And she takes that literally. She's five, right? Almost six. So she takes things re- very literally. And she thinks her baby brother really is a monkey. So she announces to her kindergarten class that her baby brother is a monkey. And that's why her two bestest, and she has all kinds of interesting phrasings of things, her two bestest friends start vying to be the first one to get to see this baby brother. So Junie B ends up in these situations because, you know, she does overhear things. She's very curious. She is very um, spontaneous and stubborn. And... She's, as I said, she's curious, like a lot of small children, but she's also, again, very literal. That's why she thinks that her baby brother really is a monkey. I think that Junie B would be a bit of a challenge for her teachers for all of these reasons. I'm sure if I spoke to any number of my friends who are teachers, they would say that they have had students in their class who um, remind them of Junie B, who are just as curious, just as smart, and um, just as literal. But the thing is with these books is that, of course, the situations always get sorted out. And Junie B usually learns something from them, which is great. Um, 
some they're they're over the top. The situations are always a little bit over the top, but that's why they're so enjoyable and so funny. You can resonate with Julie B. You can see your own kids in her curiosity and in her spontaneity, but you also um, know that she's fictional. You don't have to be Junie B.'s parents. Um, and, and I wonder sometimes if if Junie B.'s parents were real, if they would. Um, want to have a nice big glass of wine at the end of the day because she really is a she really is a crack up she really is um a bit of a challenge sometimes but i love how barbara park approaches her junie b stories because it's apparent that she knows small children and has spent some time with them Junie B speaks like a five-year-old. Um, so this isn't adult writing as a child. Um, she uses made-up words and phrases like "Yeah, only guess what." And in the first bro- in the in the first book, like I said, that the boy in her class says that his brother told him that kids on the bus pour chocolate milk on other kids' heads. That's what it was. It was chocolate milk, not pudding, not orange juice. I kind of mixed them together, apparently. Um, so then all of those shenanigans get start to happen. She doesn't ride the bus and. Nothing horrifying or scary or or terrible happens. It's just from the perspective of Junie B's parents when they find out exactly what she gets up to alone in the school. I mean, she she's in the library. She's in the nurse's office. She is all over that school just hanging out. She takes out craft supplies in her teacher's room and plays with them. She sharpens pencils in the library down to nothing. Um Eventually, she has to go to the bathroom, but all the doors are locked. This is what finally gets her to realize that she shouldn't be in the school. All the bathroom doors are locked, and she figures this is an emergency. So she knows that in an emergency, you call 911. You call the police. So you can see how these books veer into the silly rather quickly. But I think that's part of their charm, and it's definitely why I enjoy them so much. I'm never quite sure. I never know what Junie B. is going to come up with next. I see these books as great for a young reader to read on her own, but also for parents to read with their children, like my sister does with her children. And because Junie B does get into some interesting situations, she thinks things in her head that aren't necessarily accurate or true. And I think that these situations, these over-the-top, very silly situations that Junie B gets herself into really open up a lot of great possibilities for adults and children to talk about their own life experiences, how they might understand situations differently than what those situations might actually be. And Junie B. reminds us that kids hear things and maybe think about things differently than adults do. It makes me think of when I was about five years old or so, about the same age as Junie B., and I overheard my parents talking about someone they knew who had recently got let go of their uh, from their job and they said he'd gotten fired and i was so completely confused i couldn't figure out why they weren't more scared by this conversation because i was picturing actual fire and i didn't understand what that had to do with the rest of their conversation you know right they're just talking so casually about this and i think that people will identify with junie b whether from their own childhoods or from the kiddos that they know in their own lives um, and someone I was speaking to recently referred to Junie B as a brat. And I don't like that word. I mean, I think we I think we use that word sometimes as a go to much too easily for children who are curious, children who are spontaneous. And, you know, there are bratty kids out there, but she because she does get in herself into some crazy situations, but I don't think that title is accurate for Junie B. Um she's not mean. She doesn't do things to be deliberately naughty. She's not trying to, you know, get get out of things. So she simply sees the world her way and tries to navigate through it, which leads to some interesting, which leads to some learning curves for her. So I would definitely recommend these books for the kids in your life. And hopefully they will lead to some good, probably funny conversations about their, those, their experiences and your own experiences as children. So check out the Junie B. Jones books. We do have to take another short break. But when we come back, um, I'll be talking about Ramona, the Ramona Quinby books by Beverly Cleary. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about the Junie B. Jones series by Barbara Park. And now I want to shift our attention to the Ramona Quimby books by Beverly Cleary. There are eight books in the Ramona series, um, but there are more books that take place in the world of R- that Ramona inhabits because there are a few about her big sister, Beezus, and about Beezus' friend, Henry Higgins. Um, kids everywhere, I think, feel com- connected to Ramona's unique way of looking at the world as she tries to adjust to new teachers. This is a description of the book. As she tries to adjust to new teachers, feels jealous about Susan's curls, and is secretly pleased by Yard's ape teasing. The scrapes she gets herself into, like wearing pajamas to school or accidentally making egg yolk shampoo, are funny and heartwarming and sometimes embarrassing. No matter what, Ramona's lively, curious spirit shines through. So that's a description of the series. And I read the Ramona books as a kid, and I loved them. I remember just laughing, thinking they were hilarious, enjoying them, um, thinking about myself and my older sister, because Ramona and her older sister are about the same age, um, ages apart that my sister and I are. Ramona, like Junie B., is curious and quirky, and she finds herself in some pretty, pretty hilarious and crazy situations at times. I think if I had to choose between these two series, between the two characters, Ramona and Junie B, I would say that I resonate with Ramona the most, that she reminds me the most of my own childhood. And as I said, part of that is her relationship with her sister, Beezus. Beezus is five years older than she is. And my sister, who I mentioned earlier, is six and a half years older, so a little bit different, but Um, And I actually sent her a text the other day when I was rereading the Ramona books. I sent her a text apologizing for being the the Ramona to her Beezus, for driving her crazy as the little sister who just was constantly wanting to be with her and constantly wanting to be in her stuff and just, you know, being that little sister that big sisters don't always appreciate. Ramona and Beezus interact in a lot of the same ways that my sister and I did while we were growing up. Ramona thinks that the world is frequently not fair because Beezus gets to do so much more than she does. Totally resonated with that as a kid. I thought my sister got to do everything and I got to do nothing. Didn't, you know, matter that she was almost seven years older than I was and obviously was more mature. Um, Beezus thinks Ramona gets away with everything because she's littler. And so the two quarrel a lot, but they also have each other's backs when it counts. Maybe you have siblings, maybe you can relate, maybe you have children and you've watched them interact and so you can relate. The books were written in the 70s and 80s, but they still hold up. There are a few things, you know, like landline telephones and no computers and um, just a few little things that obviously they're not written in modern times. But the books could probably take place during any time frame, uh, just the technological, the little technological things. But the family dynamics, the relationships between Ramona and her friends, between Ramona and her sister, Ramona and her parents, I think those things all still hold up. We first meet Ramona when she is in preschool in Beezus and Ramona, which is actually more from Beezus's perspective, but it introduces us to Ramona and gives an idea of their relationship. It starts the Ramona part of the series. Beezus is constantly embarrassed by her little sister, who, of course, people think is adorable because she's little, right? She's she's preschool and, and Ramona's in that somewhat more awkward phase of being in about fourth grade. Ramona sees the world through her own perspective, and she just doesn't understand why everyone else doesn't see it the same way she does. The series moves from when Ramona's in preschool until Ramona is 
in fourth grade. So we really get to watch her grow and progress through most of elementary school. And we get to watch Beezus grow from, you know, fourth or fifth grade up into the beginnings of high school in that awkward junior high phase. Ramona is curious and funny, but I think I resonated with her also because she really wants people to like her and she worries a lot that they won't. So whenever teachers are upset with her, she starts to worry that this means that they don't like her. She starts, she decides in one book that she's just going to stop going to kindergarten because she doesn't think her teacher likes her. She basically goes on strike from kindergarten. She says, my teacher doesn't like me. I'm not going to go. And I was so like that as a kid in so many ways. I was always worried that I would do something wrong. Uh, For me, it was, you know, I was a bit of a perfectionist. And so I was worried that I would do something wrong that would make my my teachers be upset with me that would make them stop liking me. Now, where Ramona and I differ is artistically because she is one crafty kid. She can draw her own coloring books. She makes a giant map of the state of Oregon with her dad. She makes shoes out of paper towels and staples. (laughs) She's just, she's got all these great crafty ideas and she is not afraid to go for them. But she hates spelling. Whereas I was always a great speller, but spent most of art during my school years frustrated and often crying because I thought I was so bad at it. And again, didn't want to do anything wrong, didn't want to be in trouble with my teachers, didn't want them to not like me. So I really resonate with Ramona, even though, you know, we were upset about different things. We we didn't our our favorite subjects in school might have been different. Of course, it's not about me. It's about Ramona. But I love um, Beverly Cleary's writing because she keeps it basic and she keeps it understandable and from a child's perspective, but she covers some big topics. So for instance, in Ramona and Her Father, which incidentally was a Newbery Honor book in 1982, so that means it was a runner up to the book that won the Newbery, Newbery Medal that year. So it's an, it's an award winning book. And that book tells of Ramona's father losing his job and the very difficult times that the family goes through as they figure out how to make ends meet. At that point, Ramona's mother begins working full-time instead of part-time, and they learn to go without many things they were previously used to having. So you see shifts in their family dynamics. You see shifts in their economic status. Eventually, their dad um, decides to go back to school, so they're trying to juggle different schedules. They're trying to figure things out. And for Ramona, who is used to, you know, being the youngest and having a lot of her mother's attention, it's a very difficult period. So I think, as with Junie B, these are great books to read with your children or have your children read on their own, and great books that could facilitate some really good conversations. You know, when was a, when was a time that you felt like Ramona, or have you ever felt like Beezus, or those types of conversations? You probably know them more, better than I do. You probably already have them with your children, but I think that Ramona and Junie B are both great examples of feisty, strong, capable young women who have their own minds and think their own thoughts. And sometimes they get into scrapes, but they're also caring and funny and loving and good little role models, good little conversation starters for um, your kids of younger elementary school age. So that is actually all the time that I have for today. I want to thank you so much for joining me in my discussion of the Junie Junie B. Jones series by Barbara Park and the Ramona Quimby series by Beverly Cleary. Don't forget that you can learn more about the GSMC Podcast Network at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. I would love to hear from you on social media. What are your favorite books? What were your favorite books as a child? What are your favorite books now? So I hope you will jo- I, I hope you will join me again next time. But in the meantime, as I always say, go get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you for joining me. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.com. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.